those who have been around my channel for a little bit know that this is not my typical video. So bear with me for just a minute because what I haven't told you is that for my regular day job, I am a full-time freelance video editor. This is my dream desk setup. And I, I know a lot of people say that. I really mean it because I've gone through a lot of trial and error to get here. And today I need to focus on the most important, the most crucial core of that, which is the desk. Okay, so there's five main priorities for me while shopping for a desk. For number five, it could not be more expensive than $1,000. For number four, it was really important to me that the desktop was made of solid wood, preferably walnut because I love that color. For number three, the measurements for me of the perfect desk I was looking for was about 27 inches deep and 55 to 60 inches wide. For number two, it, it seems simple, is that I wanted it to be a solid rectangular corner desktop. I really don't like desktops that have curves and shapes and a little indentation for where you sit at the desk. I don't want grommets. I don't want holes in it for cables. What the which leads me to the number one most important thing in this desk, which was stability. I cannot emphasize enough how important this is because I can count on one hand the amount of times in my life I have actually used a desk that didn't wobble. It's important for you to know as a side note that I was not looking for a standing desk. So this happens to be one and I can tell you what my experience is from the perspective of somebody who wasn't wanting or looking for one and if it's been useful for me. I do wanna kick this video off with a disclaimer that Elephant Desks did send this and one other desk to me for free, but before I give you the whole opinions are my own speech, you should know that I was doing weeks and months of research for a desk, and right before I decided to click the purchase button, I figured I may as well reach out to them, shoot for the stars, why not? I would be more than likely sitting here reviewing this desk, whether or not they sent it to me because I was planning on purchasing anyways. Now, each desk comes in two different boxes. I had literally ordered something from Amazon the same day that these desks got shipped to me, and the desks got here a day before the Amazon items. It was so freaking quick, it was days, and I almost had a heart attack because because the package that came in was destroyed. It did have marks on it. It was just little tiny things around the edges. Contrary to popular belief, I do not like confrontation. So I figured they were not really big enough to really make a complaint about. But about a week later, I got an email that was kind of your typical customer. Hey, how have you been liking your product? How's your experience been? I decided to reply with just my honest feedback. They responded and said, yeah, we've evaluated the pictures. That was totally our fault. Don't worry about doing anything on your end. We're gonna send you a brand new one. And yes, I know the feeling of like, okay, he's saying these things about it, but he was also given the product for free. And so he wants to make a good relationship with the company. Blah, 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 blah. I get it. But if you're ever wondering my integrity in terms of what I say about these companies, just watch my last video. I don't expect to ever hear back from that company again. Uh, I'm not entirely convinced that this thing isn't possessed. <laughs> Now, something that I'm not really the hugest fan of is in terms of the instructions for assembly, they really leave most things up to you in terms of how you want to organize the cable management and the batteries under this desk. And that honestly annoyed me at first. So I'm going to go ahead and save you guys some time and show you a picture of what under my desk looks like and how I organized it. I've ended up doing a lot more cable management. I kind of plan on making a whole separate video on how I do my cable management because I a lot of times have to leave on the road and take a lot of the core equipment on my desk out. And so a lot of it needs to be routed very organized so that I can pull it out without pulling out the whole messy cable system and just grab what I need from it. That being said, I've never really been comfortable with the idea of just nailing things into my desk. And that includes the actual control panel that they give you here. They do give you the nails and instructions to nail it in. And so I ended up using Gorilla Tape, essentially like really hefty Gorilla Tape. As a matter of fact, that's what I used for all the batteries and the large items. So for number five, this was actually just a little bit tricky because technically speaking, if you go to their website right now and look at this exact model, of desk, which is the 60 inch abundant series, you'll see that it actually runs for $1,200, which makes it look like I'm breaking my own rule, but I'm not. When I got this, it was on sale for $900. And no, I'm not cheating. In the several months that I have had this desk, I have never once seen them not be on sale. And that includes the 30% off all of their products. And so I'm going to treat this like a $900 desk. If you're interested in this and you happen to see it not on sale, maybe just wait like 10 seconds. <laughs> now, in terms of the desk itself, it is made out of solid wood and it comes in oak and walnut. Walnut. I really went into this expecting just to like the walnut colored desk because that's my vibe 100%. And I was shocked at how much I fell in love with this oak desktop. In terms of how it actually looks with the big solid wood desktop, it's 
absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I'm like so excited about these. These things are some of the coolest desks that I've ever seen. And it really is my preference and style to just have a super minimalistic, beautiful desk that blends into the background. Now about the last thing, the most important thing in a desk for me, I really want to emphasize this because I cannot count how many desk reviews I watched that refuse to touch up on the stability of the desk. And that is so important. Like I'm not going to go buy a five, six, seven, eight hundred dollar desk if it wobbles. And I've already had poor experiences with four legged desks not being stable and having a lot of wobble to them. So I was really concerned about having a two legged desk and I was shocked at how stable this thing is. It is the most stable desk that I have ever used, especially if it's on its lower or lowest settings. Those are the settings that you're going to be using 98% of the time. However, that's not the full story because this is a standing desk and it can get up really tall. Actually, there is more wobble as you might expect when it is in its higher positions. For starters, I have a lot on my desk. I have a 32 inch monitor speakers and secondary shelves. If you're a lot more minimalistic, you're going to notice that jitter quite a bit less when it's standing. That being said, as I started using it, while I noticed it first, after about five to 10 minutes, I've completely stopped noticing. As a matter of fact, this desk at its highest point is genuinely more stable than most regular four legged desks that I've ever used. And when I was arranging it, you end up pulling like the metal legs out and they are just rock solid. They're not going anywhere. I don't know what mechanisms they use for these higher end desks, but my gosh, do they work? I've looked at a lot of desks and these desks run between two to $3,000. I have no clue what two to $3,000 desks offer that this $900 desks doesn't kind of a hot take, but there are things I like more about this desk than the more expensive ones that I've seen a ton of reviews on. It's kind of a popular thing now for these higher end desks to have touch controls and touch panels. Yeah! That is something that I love about this desk is they are regular buttons. So you know, and you've pressed them, you don't have to look down at the screen to make sure it's been activated. So I've set preset one to essentially being my lowest desk height. These are the days where I'm just kind of slouching for number two, I've set it as my higher sitting height, which is usually when I'm a little bit more focused and I'm like sitting up straight. And then the third one I've set as my standing height. Something I ended up really liking that I didn't expect out of this desk was the height range because the last several desks that I use when at their sitting height were just a little too high for me. I think the average desk height is around 29 inches. And something that they don't say that I'll mention here that's really nice is that their minimum desk height is around 27 inches to the bottom of the plank. That's going to cater to a lot of maybe shorter people or more average heighted people like me. I'm five foot 10. That's average. Okay. From ground to the top of the plank in the highest position, a little less than 47 inches. So like 46 and a half inches tall. So much taller than I'll ever need it to be. I did mention that I was not directly looking for a standing desk. That's not something that matters a lot to me. I know that I sit most of the day. I know I'm going to sit most of the day. And so when I got this desk, it was really for everything besides the standing aspect. And I'm not going to sit here and exaggerate things to you guys. It's not life changing. You're standing at your desk. That being said, just the small difference of being able to transition between standing and sitting while doing sometimes hours and hours of work is really nice. Sometimes you don't want to get distracted and go walking around and you want to keep working, but you don't want to have to stay sitting. If you're not interested, in a standing desk and you just don't see why it's a big deal and everyone keeps telling you how life-changing it is, I would say listen to your gut. It's really not a big deal. If you're going to go in for a standing desk, understand that you are going to be paying a higher premium. I would very strongly advise avoiding the lower cost, lower end standing desks. At the $100 to $400 to $500 price range, I'd strongly recommend just finding a solid sitting desk because you're going to get a high quality sitting desk at that price and a really low quality standing desk at that price. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not going to color on my keyboard. I don't actually use these. They're like seven years old. They just look cool. So some final thoughts on this desk. I am incredibly, incredibly picky about desks. And this desk is by far the closest I've ever gotten to completely closing that gap between perfection and my expectations. And I genuinely expect these things to last the next like five or 10 years for me because they are really, really sturdy. I would give these desks a solid nine out of 10. So obviously if you're looking to buy one of these or maybe bookmark it for your future research, I have put the link to their website in the description and they're only sold on their website, but it has just recently dawned on me that I have not made any sort of subscribe call to action in my videos for like a year and a half. I, don't know, I should probably try. So please hit the subscribe button so that I don't have to do this again. When did this turn off? Couldn't have told me.